Welcome to the University of Kentucky High Tunnel Research Facility. Hopefully you've seen our video tour that gives an overview of our research site. In this video, we will share more detailed information about our movable tunnel system. Before we talk about how we move our tunnels, let's talk about why we would want to move a tunnel at all. First, it allows us to incorporate cover cropping more heavily into our system without losing productivity inside the tunnel. This supports improved yields and helps maintain soil health. The buildup of salt in the soil is a known problem in high tunnels with years of successive production history. Salt-heavy amendments, combined with no rainfall to flush them out, can result in unacceptable salt levels in the soil. In our movable tunnel rotation, no plot is ever protected from rainfall and other precipitation for more than nine months in a given year. By moving the tunnels, we help avoid the buildup of pest and disease pressures on a given piece of land. With the high moisture content in tunnels, disease can become a considerable challenge. That covers why we move. Let's talk briefly about where the tunnels go. Our structures are rotated between three adjacent plots. In the past, we have moved the tunnels two times a year, but we are currently only moving once per calendar year. By staggering the positions of the tunnels, we avoid shading problems. Each of our three movable tunnels is slightly different, and the ways that we move them vary as well. Generally speaking, the tunnel on the far left and in the center move by simply dragging across the ground on skids. The tunnel on the right moves on casters that sit on round galvanized pipe rails. All of these are modified versions of the same 30 foot by 72 foot tunnel. Let's take a little closer look at each model. This is our least expensive model to construct. The skids are constructed of Trex decking composite board. When moving, these boards do tend to bow and flex along their length, requiring us to monitor and adjust during the moving process. The tips of the skids are custom-made aluminum pieces with an eye bolt in place to allow hookup to a winch or tractor. The only difference between the first model and the second model is that the skids are reinforced with aluminum angle. Obviously, this increases the cost, but does add some rigidity to the skids. We still have to adjust the alignment periodically during and immediately after the move. Have a little, little continental drift over here. Uh -oh. But the stress on the skid itself appears far less. Our final tunnel is different in the way it moves. Let's take a look inside and see how. This tunnel moves on casters that roll along the galvanized round pipe you see below them. As a result of being set on a track, this tunnel moves considerably easier than the other two and it follows the lines and stays on track with the rails. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Stop. It requires only minimal adjustment during movement. Several steps are necessary before any of the tunnels change places. We loosen all the anchoring cables and remove the anchors from the ground. These anchors move with the tunnel each time it changes locations. We then disconnect irrigation lines and unplug inflation fans, clearing all these things out of harm's way. Next, we flip up our end walls along a hinge and secure them in that up position with a few screws. This graphic helps to show the design of our movable tunnel end walls. At this point, we are ready to move the tunnels. The setup we use includes two 9,000 pound winches hooked up to tractors or trucks. We do our best to align the winch with the path we want the tunnel to take. Four or more people is an ideal number to have to execute this safely. Two spotters monitor the progress of each sidewall's movement and give signals to the winch operators to keep the movement as even as possible. As you can see, there can be considerable splay and warping that happens as we move the tunnels. Ratchet straps running across the width of the tunnel can help to reduce this splay, but we have to take care not to injure the crops we are moving onto or off of. Using a pry bar, we can manually adjust the alignment. This is actually easier than it sounds. Tunnel 2 moves in much the same way as Tunnel 1. While you could use a tractor and truck to move our third tunnel, we wanted to demonstrate how much easier this system is to move than the first two. With six strong people, we were able to move this unit the full 80 feet it needed to travel. With all of the tunnels moved to their final position, we will adjust alignment with the pry bar 
reinstall anchors and cables, flip down and secure the in walls, and get all irrigation and electricity plugged back in. And since this is the final position before winter, we will ensure good sealing around the skids and on the end walls after the tunnel is secured. This was just an overview of our movable tunnel system. For more information on the UK High Tunnel Research Facility, visit our website listed in the description of this video. If you'd like to visit our site, contact your county extension agent to schedule a visit.